fly line you choose has a huge impact on the performance of your rod and how your fly is presented. I'm Joe at Red's Fly Shop, and I'm going to walk you through some fly line basics today. It's just going to be kind of an overarching look at floating lines, sink tip lines, full sink lines, and then one that's kind of a fly line type, but it would be a Euro nymphing line. And I'm just going to give you a basic rundown. I had sat down to write a blog article on streamer fishing and came upon this moment where I had to really define sink tip lines, the different types. And I thought, you know what? I really need to do a video on all major types. So stay tuned. I've got my real case right here with a bunch of different lines on it. And I'm going to walk you through those types of fly lines and explain a little bit about each and how they might be of benefit to you to invest or utilize some of these lines better. The first one we're going to talk about is going to be your classic floating fly line. This is going to be what trout anglers use 90% of the time. And 90% of those anglers are going to be using what we would call kind of a general purpose floating line. And that would be a floating fly line with a weight forward taper, meaning the front end of the line is going to be much thicker, making short casts much more efficient and much quicker so that we can pick the fly up lay it down very, very easily and get those high performance, real snappy rods to load up at close range. Very comfortable to cast. That's a weight forward floating line. On that line, you could run uh, a dry fly, of course. You could run a nymphing setup with a strike indicator. You could do a little bit of everything. You could even take the welded loop. There's a loop uh, integrated into here. And we could even loop in a sinking leader and make it kind of a sinking tip line, although it's not ideal. Point is, a general weight forward floating line is gonna be what uh, serves you through most of your fishing. Very, very uh, useful. Now, within floating lines, there's also gonna be kind of some specialty tapers, if you will. And that might uh, be a line that's really great for nymph fishing when we need to make a roll cast with with some junks, it's a kind of the proverbial junk in the trunk, so to speak, where we're gonna make a roll cast and I have a strike indicator and maybe two nymphs or some weight, a fly line with a lot of weight in the tip is gonna be better suited because I don't need that delicate presentation that I would need for say a caddis fly on the water. The other one is gonna be uh, a fly that has maybe 30 feet of really thick line up front in a very skinny running line, I could shoot that a long ways. That might be considered a shooting head where that fly line might be really good for throwing a very, very large fly and popping it into the lily pads like for bass, for instance. So there are some specialty lines uh, within that as well. And lastly, there would be lines that are maybe a very delicate taper that have a very, very, very fine, thin tip, like a double taper or a light line. And there are other videos that can outline those. But within floating lines, there are going to be some, some specialty lines within there. But a weight forward floating line uh, fits most people's needs 90% of the time for trout fishing. All right. The vaunted sinking tip line, our favorite style line for streamer fishing in rivers. And a line that not enough anglers, in my opinion, make good use of. A sinking tip line is most popular in rivers versus a, a line where the, the whole thing sinks. That'd be a full sinking line because I have the floating section through most of the body, which then allows me to mend and manipulate the sinking portion, which is dark all the way out here. And this one has, I think, 14 feet of sink tip line which is a nice distance for fishing large Western rivers like I'm typically fishing and guiding. The nice thing about a sink tip is I can blast that thing out and I can get that. The end of my line will sink the fastest. That's generally referred to as density compensated where the tip of the line sinks the quickest and I can still mend and manipulate or strip or twitch or do the fishy stuff utilizing the floating body portion on the back end and also having that floating body makes it a lot easier to pick up and lay down with a little bit more line out there. So the sink tip allows you a bit of control, but it also gets your line down underneath those real fast surface currents so that I could fish a streamer or a bait fish pattern slow and low underneath those real powerful swift currents on the surface. So 
When it comes to a sink tip, it's not just about getting your fly down underneath there. If I can get my line underneath those real choppy currents, I'm going to have a lot more stability underneath the surface. The antithesis of that would be, say, using a floating line with a real heavily weighted streamer. While the fly might get down deep, the current is still going to have a lot of push and control on that floating line, which is up on the surface, endearing all the waves and the different chop, eliminating a little bit of my control to keep that fly moving very slow and low. There are tons of different types of sink tip lines. The best and most popular is going to be uh, an integrated sink tip where I've got this seamless transition of sinking line here, which is very dark, and then it gets a little bit lighter and gets a little bit lighter, and then all of a sudden it turns into more of a classic kind of taupe or yellow colored floating line. And that's an integrated sink tip line where I don't have any connections. There are other sync tip lines like this Skagit system here that I might spay cast with or I could overhand cast it where I've got a loop to loop connection between a chunk of sinking tip line right here and a connection here. Those don't tend to cast as nice. They kind of wobble and hinge a little bit. And then when I, when I strip this part in, I've got that loop to loop connection uh, that is going to bother me a little bit right there. And they're a little bit clunkier. These are, these are okay for swinging streamers in current, not great for casting out and stripping in, like from a boat, for instance, where we might strip the line right back up to the boat. An integrated sink tip is going to be far better. All these sink tip lines are, are available in, in various sink rates, um, starting with a real fast sinking tip like this, trout ex, this Scientific Angler's Trout Express. And I'll link uh, some products in the video description to a very slow sinking tip, which this one here is clear, and that just barely sinks at all. And I really like this sink tip uh, for lakes. It's a very versatile line where I want a very slow sinking streamer presentation for like a leech or a swimming nymph in a lake. I can also use it in the river with a, with a sinking fly and that slow sinking clear portion will get down underneath those choppy currents. So depending on your needs, uh, there may be different situations if you think you're going to lake fish a little bit, you want to buy one line to try to do it all. The clear tip, streamer tip type of line is good. Uh, and if you need to get down underneath real swift currents and you're fishing a large river, something that sinks, say, five inches per second or six inches per second might be better. They're available in a variety of sink rates. If you're totally new to sink tip fishing and you're going to be using it in a river, I like something that sinks about three to four inches per second with no more than about 15 feet of sink tip at the end, preferably more like 10 feet of sinking line at the end would be a great starting point for your sink tip line uh, career. A short additional note to sinking lines is that some lines, the entire thing is going to sink, and we just call that a full sinking line. Those are very, very handy in still water or lake scenarios. And much like a sink tip, they come in various sink rates from a very slow sinking uh, rate, which we often call an intermediate or a, a hover rate, which is just an inch to two inches per second. So if I cast it out one one thousand to one thousand, I might have sunk up to two inches. So very slow, great for very slow retrieves, neutral buoyancy type flies like leeches, which which don't. <laughs> Leeches don't plummet. They have a very liquid uh, density to them, so they swim very slow. And when I when I stop stripping, an intermediate line allows that fly to just kind of hover, uh, hover and levitate in the water column. I don't have um, a full sinking line rigged up right now, but my preference for lake fishing is almost always going to be a full sinking, clear intermediate line. And the reason a full sinking line is much preferred on lakes is if you could imagine... A sink tip is going to cast out, and as I discussed, it's going to be density compensated. So the end with the fly on it is going to sink the deepest. And then every time you strip, that fly is going to swim up in the water column. Looks a little bit phony in many circumstances to retrieve a leech or a nymph. And every time you strip, it goes up. Um, <clears throat> a full intermediate line will go out and it will sink. And then it will have a nice level retrieve so that you're staying at that same depth all the time. A lot of times in lakes, there's going to be these thermal layers uh, where the trout are going to be sitting very specifically at a depth 
once we find that using, say, a countdown technique where I count out 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, if I'm not getting bites at 3, 1,000, maybe I count to 8, 1,000 or 10. Once I start getting a few strikes, I want to keep my fly in that same zone the entire retrieve. So full sinking lines are much more popular for lakes. If you're new to sinking line fishing, that intermediate rate is a very, very good choice to start. Highly experienced lake anglers, especially in colder water conditions, will often choose much faster sink rates. But you do have a little lack of control and you do need to keep the fly moving a little bit faster. So I recommend starting with that intermediate rate, figure things out, and then maybe adopt uh, later on some of those faster sinking rates. They're a little bit harder to control. You wind up with a few more snags uh, as well. So that's the downside anytime that you use faster sinking lines. All right, last line and then some concluding thoughts. The last one doesn't really count, but it's basically going to be a Euro nymphing line or a mono rig, which is almost impossible to throw a traditional fly cast with without some weight of the fly. These are designed to be ultra thin, really slice through the wind and the water and not have any weight to it so that you don't get sag between your rod tip and your presentation, ultra thin, uh, razor, razor thin, designed to be super light. Now, in conclusion, when it comes to choosing fly lines, there's tons of different options out there. You can always contact us at Reds. Our live chat feature works. It's great. Email us, call us. We can help choose a great fly line for you because it does have a huge impact on what you're doing. Uh, I, not everybody needs to have as many trout reels as I do. It's almost ridiculous. But over the years, I, I have old reels like this um, that I upgrade. And what I like to do is I rather sometimes than buying spare spools for a reel where I could certainly do that and have a spare spool. Now, if I had a reel I really love, I will buy an extra one of these and I can just plug it in with my other line on there. But a lot of times if I get itchy to upgrade a reel, I just take and keep my sink tip lines or the ones that I'm not using all that often on one of my older reels. And then I can just plug and play that on my rod when I'm in a situation where I want to switch up. So I hope you enjoyed uh, learning a little bit more about fly lines today. Like and subscribe. Ask questions in the comments and I'll do my best to jump right on them and get back to you. But thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful. Thank <laughs> you.